The Ben Coley Podcast. Hey, welcome back. This is the Ben Coley Podcast. Hello. Uh, this is where I chat to you about my favourite new unsigned or under the radar artists. I pick three different artists each week, three different genres, three totally different artists that I love. So basically, it's kind of a quick snapshot, really, of what's going on in new music at the moment. If you're like me and you love all different sorts of genres, then consider this really a quick pit stop where you can touch base with some different sounds and collect some new tunes for your library whilst you're in the process. A few little things before I start. If you've got any suggestions or questions for future episodes, if you're a band or an artist listening right now and you want to send in your music, please just hit me up on my socials at BenColey97 on Twitter, underscore BenColey on Instagram, or you can drop me an email, the Benkoley podcast at gmail.com. Uh, in terms of copyright, copywriting and podcasting is a nightmare. So I've reached out to all of the unsigned artists. If they're signed to small labels, I've reached out to the labels as well. They've informed me that they're the sole copyright holders of their music and they've given me full permission to use their songs. All of the links to all of the artists and their music is in the description. And as always, please, I'd love it if you could leave a review, leave a rating, download and share as well. That'd be ace. In terms of my sponsors for this episode, it's Indie Central Music. They're just a real small team, a great group of lads that are really dedicated to just informing you about what's going on in the indie scene right now. You can unearth some of the hottest indie and alternative talent around. They've got amazingly insightful interviews. They've got feature length interviews as well, where they really get to the nuts and bolts of the music and the artists that they're talking to. And they also put together some specially curated Spotify playlists as well, which I definitely recommend. So go and check them out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search Indie Central Music. Okay, my first artist, I'm just going to get straight in with it. It's a solo artist called Heaven. So she's basically an alt pop artist originally from Italy. She's originally from Milan. She's now based in London and she's got a degree in songwriting and production at Tile Yard Studios. And really, Heaven has just been gigging around London and Camden Assembly. She's been going to venues as well, like The Bridge. And she's also done a few different festivals like the Great Escape Festival. This year obviously has been super difficult for artists, hasn't it? But... Heaven's been keeping really busy. She's been busy writing. You can tell she's been in the studio. And despite everything, despite everything going on this year, people are still really captivated by what she's doing. She's had 70,000 streams across 86 different countries on Spotify. She uploaded one of her Spotify wrapped things and she's been absolutely killing it. So this is her track, her latest track that I'm going to talk about called Somebody. And this dropped on the 11th of September. Hi, this is Heaven, and this is my track, Somebody. Um, when I started writing this song, the first thing that I came up with was the chorus and the concept. And I remember thinking, this is really special. I want to bring this track to life. So the whole concept basically revolves around fame, around the desire of wanting to be somebody and do something that matters in this world. But it also makes you question, what does it actually mean to be somebody? And is it worth losing yourself trying to become somebody? You know, I'm singing, I want to be somebody high up where the whole world's watching me and I wouldn't mind if no one really sees me. And then at the end, I'm questioning myself and singing, everybody says I should know better. Being someone else won't make me any better. Being someone else won't make me somebody. Because ultimately I feel if you want to connect with people through music, authenticity is everything you need. Um, so I had this catch of chorus and hooks, um, started writing this when I was back in Italy and then came back to London and I was like, I need some great people to finish this track with. Um, so I teamed up with two of my friends who are amazing songwriters, um, Zoe Z and Ina Shai. And they know me really well, so we sat in their living room and they just got the vibe straight away and we basically ended up writing more parts and just finished the track, um, which was then produced by Jamie Sellers. And with Jamie, really, we recorded everything in two days in his beautiful studio in the middle of nowhere, which was so calming. Um, and then we just went back and forth to adjust a few details. But because I had a very clear idea for the production, we pretty much had the, the whole track done from the very first session. And I wanted the song to have this um, dark, moody feel to it. But I would say my favourite part in the end is actually the bridge, um, which is completely different from the rest of the track. It just has this beautiful epic string session. And there's a video on YouTube for the track, which you can check out. I filmed it during the first um, quarantine on an iPhone, which was a bit weird because usually I'd have a big team uh, working on set. 
Um, and then the video was edited by James Gallant, um, who's also amazing. Um, he's worked um, with me before um, for my previous music video for Feelings. And yeah, it's a very special track to me and I just really hope that people out there, you know, can relate to it and just feel inspired by it. Against the odds, smoke and mirrors, I was praying God, cause I need more, yeah, I just had a dream. So you're probably realising that Heaven has this seamlessly satisfying switch between her chest voice and her falsetto voice. And I absolutely love that. You've got some artists that, you know, can do an all right falsetto, but their comfortable sort of pitch is in their chest voice. Some artists have an incredible falsetto, thinking of people like Chris Martin or perhaps someone like Ben Howard. But Heaven can really do both, and she switches between them so effortlessly. And I love the subtle little embellishments that she's got going on in the second verse, which you're just about to hear. So the beat comes through pretty thick and strong. You'll hear Heaven's melody just cutting through like a razor. It just sounds absolutely amazing. And I'm still loving this resonant bass and these atmospheric swirls that are going on in the background as well. You'll hear it. and. It's not necessarily loud in the mix, it doesn't take over, but it gives this track a mystic sort of quality, I think. Almost a hallucinogenic quality, which I think Heaven actually replicates in her lyrics, I'm in the dream, and also in the line, high up where the whole world's watching me. The more I try, the more I lose sight of who I am. Tell me who I am. Everyone said I should know better being someone else. Make me any better, make me any better uh -huh, uh -huh. Make me any better I wanna be somebody Everybody knows my name I wanna be somebody And I don't really care what it takes I wanna be somebody Hope for the whole world's watching me It's just a little pop gem, isn't it? I think there's such a raw authenticity to Heaven's vocals. And I think her vocals sound really rich, but they're kind of left alone. You're not, you're not hearing a load of auto-tune. You're not hearing a load of vocal effects. The vocals are really nicely compressed, but you're just hearing this really beautifully powerful voice, I'd say. And I love just the glittery instrumental that her vocals sit on, and it kind of gives it this intoxicating sort of feel. And you're about to hear now a great little middle eight section just before the final chorus. think if this track's anything to go by she's only going to go on to release more amazing tunes as time goes on you know what i stumbled across this next band on youtube i don't know how it's happened but i think my youtube algorithm is just perfectly in tune with what i'm doing because i'll click on say an artist that i like and then it will suggest lots of other artists to me and i saw an artist name that really jumped out at me fight milk it's literally like putting two random words together, 
but there was something about it and I clicked on it and Fight Milk haven't got a load of views. They're, you know, they're not huge by any stretch, but they are honestly writing and sounding like a band that are so confident in themselves. They're actually sounding like they've already made it. And that's what you really want. You want to see a band that are hungry. So they're an indie rock power pop four piece from London. And they've been going since about 2015. You've got Lily Ray on guitar and lead vocals, Alex on guitar, Healy on bass and Nick Kiddle on the drums. They dropped a debut album called Not With That Attitude back in 2018. The latest single I'm going to be talking about today is actually taken off LP number two, which is on the way. Now, I saw written down somewhere that they're meant to be releasing it this year. I haven't seen any signs of it yet, but I think it's still going to be coming out. So expect it to be dropping pretty soon. Go and check out their socials and keep an eye out on it if you like this next song in particular. And they're signed to Reckless Yes Records. And I've done a little dig in. Reckless Yes Records look really fascinating. They're an independent record label that the band have been signed with since 2018, but they also operate ethically. So they release all of their music internationally, but they do it in ways to minimize their environmental impacts. A massive shout out to Sarah Lay and Pete Darrington on that one who have set that up. And I think if you're uh, an up and coming artist and you're not yet signed to anyone, maybe head over to Reckless Yes and just see the sort of artist they're shipping. And if it fits what you're doing, go and send your music to them because they seem like they've got a really good thing going on. So I'm going to chat to you about this song that has a super long name. It's called uh, I'm Starting to Think You Don't Even Want to Go to Space. Now, if every time I talk about this track, I say that full title, this episode's literally going to go on for like two hours. So I'm just, for argument's sake, just going to shorten this track down to space. That's what I'm going to call it. But I'm going to get stuck straight into it. Hey, Ben, I'm Lily from Fight Milk, and this is our track, I'm Starting to Think You Don't Even Want to Go to Space. This is the first single off our second album. We released this song in April last year, and the album is due this spring, which is taking the whole concept of delayed gratification to a new level. I wrote it as a bit of an imagined argument between naming no names, a pop star and her boyfriend, who just happens to be the world's richest man. But it's also about watching someone constantly going on about how they're going to change the world and save humanity, and then they just never get round to it or can't be bothered because they're a selfish ball bag. I'm sure we can all relate to that. We wanted to do something a bit different from our first album, so there's all these lovely spacey sounding things on it, guitars that sound like rockets blasting off, beepy synths, and so on. We wanted to use a sample of Tim Curry from a game called Red Alert 3 in the instrumental bit. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! Uh, But we were advised it was a bit illegal to do that. But if you play it at the same time, it does work really well. So I recommend you give it a go. We also made a very silly Star Trek themed video for it too, with giant cats and amazing special effects, all done by the fabulous Sean Grimsley, who is a filmmaker. Uh, We're glad that you love the track and thanks for playing it. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! You heard a little bit from Fight Milk as well, chatting about the song. And isn't it insane so far already you wanted to listen to more? It's a track about space, obviously. And it starts off with these kind of oscillating, warbling synths. And then in creeps this beautifully droning, chiming guitar riff from Alex. I think it's really beautiful from Alex. I think Alex is almost the unsung hero of this band. Don't get me wrong, Lily's vocals up front and as a front woman, she's amazing. But... I think Alex just brings in some really tasty little licks into the mix. Stylistically, it's got the hypnotic quality of an edge guitar apart from U2, actually, I thought. So the verse instrumentation I could listen to all day. You've got these amazingly beautiful, gentle chords ringing out from Lily. And then there's these nifty little rim shots from Nick on the kit and such a shape-shifting bass line from Healy as well. And Lily has such a good voice. 
it's so powerful and she's got so much control over her intonation so I'll, I'll show you a little clip now where in the chorus there's just this seamless beautiful jump that's the kind of interval of a third and she just does it so effortlessly and it's the chorus on this thing as well it's so catchy i love how there's a real mixture going on even though it's such a simple chorus there's a lot to unpack you've got these poppy hooks and then you've got these spacey references as well to uh interstellar in the lyrics and then in terms of the guitar work you've got these real abrasive punk power chords that are chucked into the mix and it gives the chorus i think this kind of playful charm but then when you find yourself singing along to it all day the next day all day the following day you realize that these guys you have to take super seriously Here's a groove in the track that I want to talk about because it crops up a few times and for me it's the absolute bedrock of this song. I think it's just because I'm a guitarist so I listen to it and I'm like that sounds really cool. But you could just have that on repeat, never mind the rest of the song. They've already sold it to me with these kind of incredible tremolo sound effects that they've chucked in there. Obviously reference to space and stuff like that, but they haven't gone overboard with all the cosmic sound effects. They've just thrown in enough to show that, yeah, okay, you know, it's a song about space, but they do it quite tastefully. It's not cliche or anything. And then you've got some more modern glitzy. The groove, I'd say, is kind of like a modern glitzier version of Weezer or even some recent Pale Wave stuff, I think. There's this amazing drop down, this amazing middle eight section where Nick's just kind of chilling out on the ride. And then there's this beautiful ascending bass line from Healy. I love that from them. And then there's this pretty insane guitar part that creeps in. It's quite frantic and all the band just goes crazy for a minute. It's kind of this perfect climatic build up to what's to come. And they just give it one final run of the chorus for good measure. And then they finish off with that groove that I absolutely love. such a beautiful song i really like it it shows that the band have such a killer ear for melody and also there's some amazing moments in this track yeah it's beautiful songwriting but there's moments of drama and there's also moments of some punk pop fizziness that i just think gives the song an edge it makes it stand out from so many other 
bands and artists that sit in this kind of genre. So overall, I think that we need to be taking Fight Milk pretty seriously. I'm 100% going to be listening to LP2 when that drops. I think they've got some amazing stuff, and you can just tell they've still got room to improve. I mean that respectfully as well. Don't get me wrong, this song's amazing. You can just tell that they're only just getting started, and they sound hungry, which is what I love. So I can't wait for the new album, and I hope Fight Milk keep being Fight Milk, because, yeah, this thing's ace. I think this is an artist that just does simple so well. Brit is the epitome of simple but effective. So she's a 20-year-old singer-songwriter from Glasgow. I think she sounds like she's been singing for way longer. She's so comfortable with her voice. And she's actually said herself in all of her bios that one of her biggest talents is overthinking. Preach. Agree. Uh, And she says that that's great for songwriting, but not so great for trying to get to sleep. She's got this real modern folk quality as well, which I like. And she's got such raw and honest vocals. Vocals that straight to the point there's no messing around she you know trims the fat gets straight to it but it resonates with you she's got a new video out as well for her latest single which is directed by nathan mcgregor and i think it's a great video go and check that out so this is brit's track called i can't get over you and really it's about a toxic and ultimately unsuccessful relationship that she's been struggling to get over and you're going to be hearing throughout this track how relatable these lyrics are in fact i'll let brit talk to you a little bit more about this track hey ben it's brett here and this is my song i can't get over you so i can't get over you is based on a kind of toxic relationship that even though you kind of know it's needs to be done you just can't really help yourself but going back and forgiving the person even though you know it's going to end up in you getting hurt so this song actually didn't take that long for me to write i think i wrote it within around like 20 to 25 minutes um so i think i must have been feeling a type of way that day or something for it to just kind of come out like that but yeah as soon as i wrote it i knew that i wanted to put it out as my first single because i just feel like it was different to anything that Kind of written before. I worked with an amazing producer called Sam Gallagher who is from Glasgow and he actually recorded and produced the song. Uh, we recorded it in his kind of home studio thing which was really cool. It was quite a laid back and not a stressful experience which was really good for me. I actually recorded it last January which is crazy to think about now. I can't believe that was a whole year ago but yeah I waited until October to put it out obviously due to reasons that I won't name but um, yeah that was kind of the time that felt right for me to do that. When I filmed the music video for the song uh, it was directed by a guy called Nathan McGregor who's from Glasgow and he's a really talented videographer slash photographer and I feel like he always comes up with really unique concepts and ideas for videos which is really cool. This one involved a car, (laughs) which was interesting. I don't think he actually trusted me to drive the car whilst he was filming, which was hilarious. But yeah, if you go back and watch the video, you'll see that it's just kind of me in a parked car. Um, But yeah, I mean, safety first and all that. So yeah, we actually filmed it in a wind farm. I think it was 11 o'clock at night. So it was really, really dark in the middle of nowhere, which wasn't scary at all. I remember it was like minus two up there so that was really fun (laughs) but I really loved how it came out in the end and it was worth all the struggles. So after releasing my song in October it's actually been played on BBC Introducing where they spoke about my song as well. It's been played on BBC Scotland, Uh, it's been featured in the Scotland on Sunday which is a really big paper up here so yeah it's just been so cool. As this was my first single, I didn't really expect a lot when I put it out and was just kind of like, oh, whatever happens, happens kind of thing. But yeah, to be getting like that kind of response, especially from BBC Introducing as well, when a lot of my favourite artists and bands have like kind of been played on that, it was just really amazing and I honestly, I was really shocked. (laughs) Thanks so much for inviting me to come on your podcast, Ben. I really do appreciate it. I really like what you're doing here featuring new upcoming artists. I think that's really amazing. So yeah, I should have some new stuff coming out very soon actually. So if anyone listening wants to follow me on any of my social medias just to keep up with that, it's just Brit X Music, Brit with two T's, which I always remind people. 
starts with this bright and punchy acoustic guitar real folky it's got that rhythmical sort of percussion to it it's accented as well with some hand claps which i quite like but really that's quite sort of skeletal the main selling point of this song from the off is brit's insane voice is powerful i thought it was really bold and their intonation is amazing as well because if you listen to the melody i don't think it's easy to sing but maybe that's just because i'm a bit of a crap singer I love the defiance in some of our lyrics as well. You can really tell that this relationship that she's struggled to get over has given her this huge amount of self-worth. You've got the phrase, I knew from the start that I was too good for you. And the way that she hits on this falsetto on the word knew as well is so clean. I know from the start that I was so good for you. So clean. And she just blends it really smoothly into the chorus as well. You've got this clean beat that comes in, these real trebly piano chords as well, just outlining a super simple melody that I just think kind of gives it that sort of momentum that you want. Every minute of the day is going through my head And I can seem to get over those stupid words that you said And maybe it's time we lay this all to rest Cause I was always gonna be best you got me so good you built me up to bring my heart and soul i felt so bad i'd still forgive everything that you do i can't i can't get i can't get over you no i i can't get i can't get over it's a real simple song it's a real short song and so straight after that first chorus it goes straight back into the Second verse, again, instrumentation wise, it's quite sort of bare bones. You've just got the guitar, hand claps and simple percussion. But again, it just gives a lot of breathing space for Brit to do her thing vocally. I love the narrative as well of feeling like someone's second best. I think we've perhaps all been in that situation where you do feel second best because of the way that someone's treating you. And it carries on really nicely into the second chorus followed by this drop down which i think is amazing it's it's got this real rhythmical focus to it it's almost anthemic in the way that it's quite kick heavy in the instrumentation why'd you have to go and ruin everything no why'd you have to go and say what you mean why did i not go and listen to my friends when they said beware of him you got me so good you built me up to break my heart and soul i fell so bad I'd still forgive everything that you do I can't, I can't get, I can't get over you No, I, I can't get, I can't get over you So, yeah, it's super short, isn't it? It's not even two and a half minutes But that's why I really like this song Because it's super accessible Brit really sells herself in literally two minutes so i think if you like this track you're gonna like everything else that brit has to offer kind of just trims the fat gets straight to it and ultimately it's what brit is all about this song simple but effective songwriting easily accessible melodies super strong vocal deliveries and i think music that gives enough breathing space for her to hammer home her lyrics and i'm really looking forward to seeing what else she brings out So those are my three artists for this week. Really, really enjoyable stuff from Heaven, Fight Milk and Brit. Please go and check them out. I hope you enjoyed their stuff. As always, thank you for listening and I'll be back next time with episode 20.